look at little Ruby, an adult in this town, young still, yet devout. Strong-willed these people are, I suppose they'd have to be. With raids a constant threat, you'd have to be willing to slay a friend to save them from the tormentous death of the hands of a savage orc. You have to wonder what a raid is like. How do they organize? What are the contingency plans? Right. We can still talk to someone for their insights. Pardon, miss, but may we have a moment of your time? We're scholars, you see. Traveled quite a ways just to learn all there is to Trenau. Of the bonds between its citizens. Come now, we're all friends here. You think it's all camaraderie around here? Ha! Huh. This ceremony, it's a farce. Practical, mind you, but the bonds formed only skin deep. You're saying that these people are, what, caught up in the emotion of it all? Or some are just performing a duty or something? I can tell you. Everyone by that little girl, their tears are real. Yes, the humans around her embody what Trenau is supposedly known for, the bonds of humanity. Those of greener complexion need not step near. There was a half-orc woman amongst those who aided Ruby, and you yourself are human. Are you suggesting that even you, who sees Trenau as it truly is, have an aversion towards those of orcish blood? This isn't a philosophical debate. Few of this town realize or care how the half-orcs are treated. Are young intellects such as yourselves incapable of reading between the lines? Perhaps you could enlighten us. Rejected from participating in patrols in fear they'd snitch to the first warbrand to trek near. By having some human blood in them, they're more civilized than the barbarians. Proof that orc savagery can be tamed. Trunau is known as a shining beacon to a half-orc, a place where they're treated better than in other towns. I see plenty of proof to the contrary. Perhaps those who are sacrificed during a raid are remembered as heroes who believe in Trunau's principles of fellowship, regardless of race, while the Hope Knight yet remains embedded in their throats. You're writing a tale of Trunau? Include the subculture of eradicating our green brethren. P -par pardon It sounds like a conspiracy. Speak with the graphs. Their history has been to subtly push the populace against our brothers, to weed out those they consider threats based on their blood alone. The Graf family is the root of the problem. Trunau can only improve with less of them. Intriguing, a paranoid citizen, yet she seems quite convinced. Perhaps there is an underbelly to this town. I'll tell you one thing for sure, she's terrible with her makeup. Had a line, a mismatch to her complexion from cheek to cheek across the nose. She's been here for at least one raid. Perhaps we should fish a bit, talk to Roderick, invite him to a drink at the inn. You just want to sit next to him. I... Uh, I'm going to start writing up my notes. I'll join you. Well, you must be the writers. I've been watching you for a bit. I must say you're busy bees. What do you think of our little town? It is intriguing. There's so much to learn here. Such a depth of culture. And I've been wondering about the people, like yourself. What is it like living behind the walls in an orc-rich land? Raids are an ever-present threat, and the half-orcs in town... What's it like? Oh, I know how it can seem. It's not the easiest life, but this is our home. We'll fight anyone for it, whether they be monsters, savages, or the cousins of our half-orc brethren. The, the, the cousins? Well, certainly most of the half-orcs in town were born here. The early days of Trenau, when an orc puts aside its bloodlust and cherishes a loving bond with a human. Even fighting against its own kind, the town be attacked. Nowadays, we have a good half orc population. If this is the case, then where do these uh, cousins come in? Oh, that isn't literal. It just means most of our attackers are orcs. They're distant relatives like quick great ants and the like. But despite all their commonalities, blood and family, our orc citizens like us more than them, so we all fight and kill the savages. Uh, th um, on, on, that, on that note, how well would you say the half orcs are treated? Given that they're related to the attackers, they may share the blood of those who would do us harm, but they are citizens of our town, 
As such, we treat them as we would anyone else here, whether bored or moved. In a way, it's quite nice to see those of Orca's persuasion acting civilized and using proper manners. Not like the wild dogs who'd perform heinous acts upon us for no reason than their own instinct. Our half-orcs are prime examples that the savagery of their blood can be tamed. If you'd like to learn more, I suggest speaking with the Graf family. This has been their motto for generations. Think along the lines of, all half-orc citizens are special, they're in it together with us. You see, we're quite comfortable to have their kind here. Honey, Carlos invited us to lunch. Oh, with the hubby. Bye. Oh, I hope to read your book someday. Well, that was something. She had that answer down pat. Perhaps the townsfolk are asked frequently. It's just a bit on the nose. I was expecting something like, well, all in this together, blood doesn't make a man or something. I'm more curious about the graphs. So for centuries, they've been pushing this idea. On its own, there's not a problem, but the way she phrased it, I wonder just how close the people's bonds truly are. If this woman spoke of the half-orcs as though they were a special case, well, I suppose it's understandable to think of them that way. I mean, if a city were attacked by dragons constantly, then a half-dragon showed up, it'd be shot an awful lot of doubtful glances and arrows. Surely Roderick treats them as proud citizens of Trunau. Perhaps he is the first in his family line to toss aside such an alienating belief. What are his parents like? I have to wonder how many incidents arise when raided. When you think of a particular group of people as being related to the raiders, and an attack commences, it's easy to start pointing fingers. The belief that the half orcs in town are more related to the raiders than their fellow citizens... <sighs> then the next person we should ask should be a half orc. See if he recalls infighting or brawls around the time of attacks. We'll have to ask carefully, like you did with that woman. She was just so chip and chipper, kind of an airhead really. Figured any pretense would fly right over her head. Fair enough. Alright, let us find a half walk. Uh, any would do. That sounds kind of racist. Uh, maybe have a few minutes. We are scholars, curious about, well, your life within these walls. It must be peculiar to be a half-orc in a land plagued by orc raids. Well, I was born here and raised here. I don't know much about the outside. What do you think when orcs attack? There may well be an ancestor of yours in there. Hmm. Would you feel anything of a human you didn't know was hanged for murder? Well, the... no. Exactly. This is what makes Tornau a haven for those like myself. Here, we are all one. We're equals. We live together in the hold. Any raiders better be ready for the pike, because I'm sure not gonna hesitate if an orc, half-orc, human, or anything else threatens my town. Just what I'd expect of a Trunauan, strong-willed and battle-hardened. That's what the Kelvers teach us, we're all in it together. Our blood belongs to Trunau. The... Kelvers? They're the most prominent orc family here. Patrick lives along with his sole daughter, Brunia. Her bright red hair, shining complexion, Heartwarming smile brings a cheer to a man. That's uh, 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 all. Sorry, d don't mind me. Just a man admiring a gorgeous woman. It's quite all right. It's just more details for us. Could you tell us more about the Kelvers? He was a kind man. Even after his wife passed, he managed to stay positive. Was it disease, or yes, the other way of dying out here? It was a decade ago. She fought bravely to protect her daughter, but an orc ended her life. We all mourned her passing. We respect them. Patrick always has his door open to listen to the concerns of the citizens. How many people would you say visit him? Perhaps between the half-orcs and the humans? I wouldn't know. Though you've asked some peculiar questions. Are you trying to find something spicy to add to your tale? Perhaps some non-existent trust issues? Pardon my friend, he's not the most sensible of questions. What he meant was whether the rumors were true about the strong bonds amongst the people. That blood, looks, race, and the like are of no importance. And you're all in this together, after all. Well, that's right, we're all in it together. There's no mistreatment or anything else going on here. If you'll excuse me, you've spoiled my mood. Be sure to put your book in the fiction section. It was putting on a strong face, but I get the feeling we hit a nerve there. Indeed. He was clearly agitated, so much so he rushed away. This does not bode well. Perhaps we should add that to the book? 
don't even think it. Good evening, gentlemen and lady. My friends, did you enjoy the ceremony? And the competition? Greatly, that ruby is quite strong for a little girl. And we took so many notes. The journal's worth. Your words tickle my ears. Then your book's ending must be near, yes? Not quite, and it's not a book. Though I suppose we could write one. I'll be up for that. A drink of wine for you both, on the house. And you, enough with moping around. Grow up and move on. Thank you. Uh, thanks. So, what little morsels have you gobbled up about our little oasis? A few people partook of your table. Many words exchanged. How did you fare? Um, well, we did get a few interesting opinions. Oh? What about? Um... We were wondering something. Perhaps we get a different perspective from two patrolmen and the ear of the innkeep. How do the half-orcs fare in Trunau? Given those of pure orc blood threaten daily life, I imagine there might be some who might be unable to see past such trifling details. It is a common belief that their blood can be suppressed. Pfft. I don't know who you've been speaking to, but everyone here is a part of Trunau, regardless of race, gender, age, religion. There's more to life than division. We're all working together to protect our home, a bond forged in blood. I have not heard of anyone having major strikes with a half-orc. Not without cause, mind you. Criminals come in all sizes and shapes, and they go, off into the next world. You say their blood can be suppressed, I suppose akin to taming of a wild beast. What rubbish, no one thinks that. We're all people here, children of Trenau. You clearly spoke to a traveler, don't put their opinions in your book. Not to be rude to anyone of this town, but there are plenty of historic examples of this kind of thing. Suppose there were a war between bugbears and humans, and suppose a woman raised by bugbears attempted to approach town. What would happen to her? Trunau's dip- I can understand what you're saying, but we have strong bonds here. Also, those who approach are not treated immediately as an enemy, but we are careful. Any traveler will have to get by the gods, just as you did. Half-orcs, who are with the raiders, will likely look the part and speak in a particular way. We have a keen eye for our enemies. If they pass inspection, or are vouched by one of our own, then they are allowed in. No escort, no chains. For example, one of our own, a half orc man, has lived here for something like 30 years. Moved here, in fact. His brothers and sisters joined us about a week ago. His word is all we needed to know they can be trusted. We're all citizens of Trenau. We're all in this together. Does the phrase, all half orcs are special? They're in it together with us. Sound familiar? Never heard of it. Sounds like a defensive statement. The woman we spoke with went on about uh, taming the wild blood and the kind is welcome here. Is that just a tad on the nose? You're looking too far into this. It's just an innocent comment. Not everything is meant to be divisive. Then there was a half orc man we interviewed. He seemed to get defensive about uh, mistreatment. I would imagine if he'd experienced none, he'd just laugh it off. Some cheer, some cry, some leer, some can but try. There are all kinds in here. It was a little cheery when he talked about Brynia Kelver, her soft red hair then... Hmm, it's her eyes that truly sway the heart. Oh, really? Is she that much of a beauty? R R Roderick. Ah, yes. Well, she's no different than any other radiant lass. Oh, I know, Roderick. But there's just no way to garnish their attention. I feel you, brother. So, you spoke to a traveler and a citizen, and both gave you a vibe of tensity. Is this really all it takes to ruffle your feathers? It's just that the first woman we spoke with was devout in her belief that the bonds of Trunau are only skin deep. That it's all a farce. Huh. Another traveler. She had a hope knife. What? And she was certain that the Graf family had been pushing a subtle divide between half-orcs and the rest of the community for generations. I see. The paranoid will see what they want to fuel their madness. Don't take her rantings as common opinion. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a patrol in the morning. I should get some rest. I'm quite fatigued. See you around, boys. I'd best be off as well. Uh, goodbye, Cham. Uh, goodbye to you two as well.
Are you certain it was a hope knife? Hope knife, definitely. A chain, sheath, and all. Uh, I guess there uh, are a few crazies out there who overlook things in terrible ways. Saying that there's a conspiracy inside for now, that our bonds are as thin as paper. After all the fighting we do in this town as a team, I can't understand the thinking of a madwoman. I agree, but the thought is out there. Not everyone is as level-headed as us. It just gets to you sometimes. All the orc hatred and then having half-orc citizens near. The man we spoke with, the, the half-orc, brought up a good point. He wouldn't hesitate to slay anyone who'd threaten his home. Half-orc, orc, human, whatever. That's the mindset most of the town has, certainly the defenders at least. But the rest of the populace? Things can get real gritty and push under the waves of society. I need more drink. I think we should head up Cliff. Let's leave Cham to her thoughts. Yeah, uh, good night, Cham. Good night, Cliff. Hector. Good evening. <laughs>